Is there science in our clothes? Certainly. Really, guys? Certainly? Pun budget went up this year? Just run the segment. From the Sui Dynasty of China to the Yoruba people of West Africa, humans have been using dye to make their clothing beautiful for centuries. Those same techniques are used today to make dynamic tie-dye patterns like this. And it's not just art, it's chemistry, which is great since that's what I do. I'm Tamara, I'm a chemist, and today I'm gonna show you the groovy science of tie-dye. We're gonna turn a plain white t-shirt into something beautiful with the help of a little chemistry. To get started, well, we're gonna need a plain white t-shirt. And for bright colors, this needs to be 100% cotton. If you have a polyester t-shirt, why? Are they trending? It doesn't matter. It just won't work as well. Why not? It's because of the material's properties. Cotton is made up of something called cellulose, which is a natural fiber that can be found in plant cell walls. Cellulose is also a polymer because it's made up of groups of repeating molecules all linked together like a chain. The repeating molecules in cellulose are actually glucose or sugar molecules all bonded together. The way that the glucose molecules are linked or bonded makes these chains very strong and flexible, which is great for threads and fabric. Now, normally we love these strong bonds, but to get the shirt ready for dye, we need to break some of them. And in particular, the OH bonds. And we can break them with something called soda ash. Soda ash is the common term for sodium carbonate, which is similar to baking soda, but minus one hydrogen atom, making it a little bit stronger for our use today. If you're handling soda ash, make sure you're wearing gloves. We're gonna create a solution of soda ash in water and soak the shirt for about 10 minutes. And you wanna put enough water in there so that the shirt can fully soak in it. And then we're gonna add about 200 milliliters of sodium carbonate. Ooh. We're actually gonna to wanna to mix this up. So now we take our plain white t-shirt and we're going to soak it in our solution. And in doing so, the hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the oxygens in glucose are deprotonated or removed, leaving behind negatively charged oxygen atoms. Losing these hydrogen atoms leaves oxygen itching to bond with something else. So after 10 minutes, we're gonna take the shirt out of the solution. We're gonna wring it out from all the water and sodium carbonate. Then we're gonna take the shirt, lay it flat, and using our multi-purpose fork, we're gonna try to spin this, bind it with some rubber bands. When we're done, we kind of want this to look like pizza dough before it turns into the pizza. In the 1920s, when this process was first named, they tied up the clothing with string, which is where we get the term tied dye from. Now it's time we give those oxygen atoms something to bond to, the molecules from the dye. These fiber reactive dyes contain molecules that actually replace the missing hydrogen atoms in the glucose. And what's formed is a strong covalent bond, which is why tie-dye shirts made this way keep their colors so well. Since we tied it up this way, let's alternate colors. Or don't. Do whatever makes you happy. You have to wear your shirt, not me. I'm going with red, which is the color of power and confidence. And also just because I love it. Let's also do blue. And let's finish with some purple. All sides of the shirt. Now we're done with our dye and we have to wait 24 hours for this shirt to dry. They only gave me a few minutes for the segment though, so we did this one yesterday. But you'll want to rinse your shirt until the water runs clear so the excess dye that didn't get bonded can be removed. There you have it, a colorful group of glucose molecules bonded to fabric dye. Isn't science beautiful? That's all for me. See you guys next time. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.